What's up everybody? Welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, I want to talk about what it is I do to prepare for a math exam and I figured this was good timing since final exams are coming up pretty soon. So I'm just going to share some of the things I've learned, some of my general thoughts on how to prepare for a math exam as well as how I put those into practice. And I'm not claiming to be any kind of an expert, this is all just based on my experience. But I have taken quite a few math classes and been pretty successful, so I'm going to share some of the things that I do and hopefully some of y'all either relate to some of this or maybe get something out of it. So the first thing that I make sure that I do is plan ahead. And this is pretty straightforward, but what I typically do at the beginning of the semester is I look at all my syllabi and if the exam dates are already on there, then I just go and put them in my calendar right away, right? because I sort of have a personal goal for myself that I like to start studying a week before the date of an exam. And that may seem like a long time, and I'll admit I'm not perfect. Sometimes that turns into five days, maybe even four days, but I definitely try not to push it to that three day or two day mark because that creates just an unnecessarily stressful situation. It's not a fun time. I'm sure y'all been there. I have too. Don't do that to yourself. It's not fun. Make sure you plan ahead so you can give yourself plenty of time to study and prepare for the exam. So now I'm gonna share my more general thoughts on what exactly the best way to study for an exam is, then I'm gonna get into the specifics. And where these general thoughts come from actually is from my experience as a personal trainer, believe it or not. As a personal trainer, there's something that we learn about and use a lot and it's called the principle of specificity. And in very basic terms, essentially what it means is that if you want to get really good at something, you should practice doing that something. And we use this as trainers constantly because we have all different kinds of people coming to us as potential clients and they want suggestions, they want advice, they want workout programs to help them reach their specific goals, right? And we have to be able to give them those things that will help them reach their specific goals. And that's kind of the key behind this is that you know, if somebody comes to me and wants to bench press 300 pounds and another person comes to me and says, I want to lose 15 pounds and be healthier, I'm giving them completely different suggestions, completely different workout programs. That's the basic idea. I don't want to go off on too much of a fitness tangent, but that's kind of where this comes from. So I thought about how can I apply this to help me be more successful on math exams, right? And I did that by kind of breaking down what happens on a math exam. During a math exam, we're asked questions, we're asked to solve problems, and we're expected to do those things on our own without any resources. So what do you think the best way to prepare for something like that is? Well, we should practice answering questions, solving problems, and doing those things without using any resources. And that's sort of the key idea behind my approach for studying for exams is making sure I spend plenty of time practicing doing that, right? Because that's literally what I'm expected to do in a few days or whenever my exam is. And this is something that I see a lot of students doing incorrectly, in my opinion, is that they spend a lot of their time studying by, you know, rereading notes, watching videos, uh, getting solutions from Chegg or from Simbo Lab or whatever, and they don't spend enough time challenging themselves to do problems on their own, right? And I think if you do more of that, you will be more successful on the exam. Not only that, but it just becomes a lot less stressful of a situation because it gives us a really clear idea on where we're at and how ready we are, right? If I write myself out 10 questions and I can only answer three of them without using my notes, then I know I'm not ready to take the exam and I need to keep practicing. Whereas once I get to the point where I'm just knocking out these questions like they're nothing, I'm gonna feel a lot more confident, a lot more comfortable, a lot less stressed walking in to take that exam and I'm gonna do a lot better. So that's sort of the general idea behind what I make sure to incorporate into my exam studying time. Now I'm gonna talk about the specifics on how exactly I do that. So now I'm gonna talk about the specifics. What exactly do I do? What actions do I take? And I sort of do this reviewing process in phases. And the first phase I like to call the relearning phase. Because the first thing I do is I take a list of the topics that are gonna be on the exam and I read through them and I ask myself, are any of these topics things that I never really learned in the first place, right? Because occasionally that happens. It happens to all of us. You get through a topic, maybe you bomb the quiz and you say to yourself, I'll come back to this before the exam. Next thing you know, the exam is in five days. You gotta go back and relearn it. So I make sure that I get those out of the way first. I go back, I watch videos, I ask questions, I read through the textbook, I spend extra time on those topics, 
making sure I learn them. Then I move on to the reviewing phase. And this looks a little bit different depending on what kind of class I'm in. But I will say that if you have an instructor that is nice enough to make a practice exam or make a review, then that's probably where you should start. And what I recommend doing if you're given a practice exam or a review is treating it like an exam, right? First, put the practice exam aside, take out your notes, right? Read through it, prepare yourself a little bit as you would with a real exam. Then put all that stuff aside and try the practice exam without using your notes. If you can't finish a question or if you can't solve a problem, move on to the next one. Do as much as you can because that's gonna give you a good idea on, okay, these topics I have down, these topics I'm really struggling on, and then you can go back and kinda of fill in some of those holes and maybe you know get some new problems from your textbook and make sure you have those topics that you you know struggled with down that sort of process, right? If you don't have a practice exam or have any kind of a review, that's okay. You hopefully have a textbook. I have one here. This is a pre-calculus textbook. What you can do, and this is exactly what I did in pre-calculus, in calculus, in linear algebra, in all kinds of different courses, is go to the sections that are being covered on the exam, go to the back of the section, take two or three problems, write them down, then go to the next section and repeat that until you have a good list of you know, 10 to 25 questions written down, then treat that as a practice exam. Go through, try to do the problems on your own, and you could even do this in phases. Maybe you make yourself a practice exam and the first time you go through it, you have your notes in front of you, right? Maybe you're not too confident yet. Then the second round through, you can put your notes away. Then you can go back and check your answers. How many did you get right? And you can repeat this process. And this is exactly what I do. This is what I did with pre-calculus, calculus, all kinds of different courses. And I was really successful in doing this. And I even do this today with more abstract courses, with like proof courses. I'll write down like four or five theorems, put everything away and see if I can prove these theorems on my own right? Then I'll repeat that process with maybe some different theorems or maybe trying the same theorem again. And I basically just repeat over and over until I feel confident to walk into that exam and take it, right? And that's sort of the general process for how I prepare. So I want to mention one more thing before I finish the video. And this is something that I've always done and it's always helped me. And I see a lot of people not doing this. And that is categorizing problems by type. So what I see a lot of students doing when they're studying, doing homework, going through examples, is they sort of zoom in to each problem. They look at one problem at a time as like its own little entity. And what they don't do is zoom out and think about the underlying concepts and kind of look at the bigger picture. And what we're often able to do when we zoom out and look at the bigger picture is realize that a lot of these different problems are essentially the same thing, right? then what we can do is create little categories and say this is in this type of problem, right? It's in this category. This problem is in this category. Then how this benefits us is that on the exam, when we see a problem in our head, we already have an idea of what category it is, what kind of problem it is, and how we're gonna approach solving that. That's a huge advantage, right? Let me kind of give an example. In algebra and pre-calculus, we deal with exponential and logarithmic equations. So these are kind of my categories for each of these. Dealing with exponential equations, especially in algebra and pre-calculus, really there's only two types of problems you'll see. One where you can rewrite both sides as the same base. I can write this as two to the fourth, combine those using exponent rules, eliminate the twos, right, and go from there. And the other kind where we have to use log or natural log to solve for x. That's it, two different types of problems, right? So if you know how to do each of these, you're good. Same with logarithmic, there's really just a few types and you could kind of make your own categories if you want. But this first category is similar to this first category because we have the log of something equals the log of something, eliminate the logs, solve a simple equation. Here we have to use, uh, we have to rewrite it as an exponential, two to the fifth equals x, very simple. They get a little more complicated, but what I'd like to point out is that here we can use our properties of logs to combine these. Then I have log of something equals two, wait a minute, that's just like the second category. So they do get more complicated, but what we can always end up with is either the first or second category. So now we're making connections between these different kinds of logarithmic equations. This kind of stuff is really helpful. You can do this in just about any class. You can categorize these problems and think about kind of the bigger picture because what this allows me to do is if I see something like this on my exam, two to the x 
equals seven. I already just looking at that, know in my head, well, I can't write two and seven as the same base. This is gonna be that category where I have to take the natural log of both sides. So it definitely benefits you on your exam. And not only that, but what I see a lot of people doing is stuff like this, five to the X equal nine. They'll just work out this example, then they'll work out an example like this, and they'll work out an example like this, and that's how they're studying and practicing, and they don't even realize that these are essentially all the same problem, just with different numbers. So if you're able to categorize these problems by type, what you can do is solve this problem and say, okay, I know how to do this. Oh wait, these are essentially the same thing. Let's just skip those. Let's not waste our time, and let's move on to something else. I'm good with this type of problem. Right? So it saves you time when you're studying, makes you more efficient. You can go to other stuff that you'd need more time to study on. And in general, I like this a lot. So definitely try this out. Try to make your own little categories. doesn't matter what math class you're in. You can always do this to some extent. I think it's really helpful. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, leave any comments below. I'll respond to comments and questions. Good luck with your final exams. Keep flexing those brain muscles. We're almost done, and I'll see y'all later.